Thank you, Mr. Estes. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Fitzpatrick, for five minutes of questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bukowski, thanks for being here. Um, and this is really very, very important stuff we're talking about here, obviously. Uh, I think everyone knows that. <clears throat> what I would like to do is just to make sure that I'm clear uh, and that this committee is clear on what is needed and what's being offered and what the gap is and how we get to filling that gap. So I want to focus first on the CT screening devices and move to canine. So the, the proposed budget offers, correct me if I'm wrong, $73 million for 145 CT screening devices. That's correct. Um, a full deployment, if we wanted to cover from top to bottom the airports, 450 or so in this country, would require about 2,400. Is that right? That's correct. At about $600,000 a piece? That's correct. So we're looking at a, a total price tag of about $1.4 billion. Mm -hmm. And as uh, my colleague, Mr. Keating, had mentioned earlier, and it's been discussed, there's about $1.3 billion currently uh, collected in airline passenger fees that are earmarked specifically to the general fund for debt reduction. So if th that's one place we could go, right, to get this money. Um, second is on the canines. There's two types of canines, right, passenger screening and law enforcement. That's right. Could you describe the difference between the two of those? Well, passenger screening canine is, is uh, trained to walk um, through a, a series of passengers detect a vapor, whether it's an explosive vapor or any other kind of vapor that we prohibit in the, che in the check lane, and then follow that vapor to that passenger and then alert on that passenger. And then we have officers that, that behavior detection uh, trained individuals uh, that help us uh, take care of, of that passenger's issue um, as, as we go forward. And there's currently about 400 or so passenger screening just under seven. We, we have an allocation for 379, sir, but as I said to Mr. Rogers, we don't yet have 379 on board, uh, and that's the, that's the gap we're trying to fill this year. Um, back to the, the CT scanning devices. Um, are there five or so, I understand, manufacturers of these devices, and it, and it could take several years to deploy? Yes, sir. So yep. even if we were able to, to um, uh, obtain the funds, which I think we have to because I can't think of a higher priority with all the tens of billions mm -hmm. of dollars we spent in aviation security, this is the most important thing we can do. Um, but as far as the, uh, the, the uh, not only the, getting the funding, but also the deployment, is there a problem on, on the supply side with the number of producers of these machines being able to produce enough for our demand that we have right now? Well, the good news, sir, is that we have five vendors that are that are in the competition and, and participating robustly in, in the process that we have in place. Uh, I don't know how many vendors are going to be at the end. When we get to the end and we make a decision that uh, we're going to purchase and, and certain vendors are qualified and certified by us um, to participate in that program. So really the, the volume that we can put in place depends on how many qualified vendors and then to some degree which <coughs> vendors those are because some vendors have more capacity than others do. Okay. I just want to implore the, this committee. I mean, I think we've spent a lot of time talking about it, but we got to actually take action because this is really, really important stuff. We need these screening devices in all 450-plus airports across this country. Uh, it's got to be a priority. I yield back. Thank you, Mr. 